Do you want to build a honeypot to watch attackers fail at attacks on a Raspberry Pi? Well, look no further because in this video, we're going to turn your Raspberry Pi into a honeypot using DShield Honeypot. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good, and here on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments section below. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. Raspberry Pis are the latest and lightweight and inexpensive computers, and people are using them for just about anything you can think of. Basically, a Raspberry Pi is a little small computer that comes as a circuit board, and you can install different modules and things on it, and you can even install operating systems like Linux on it. If you want to learn more specifically about what a Raspberry Pi is, then I'll leave a resource for you to check out in the description. Let's talk about the parts that you need to follow along with this video. You need a Raspberry Pi 4, this is the 8 gigabyte version. You need a micro SD card reader. You also need an SD card. Mine is a 128 gigabyte version. You need another computer so you can talk to the Raspberry Pi and you need an internet connection. Don't worry, I'll leave a link in the description with all of these different parts that you need to follow along with this video. I'll also leave commands in the description so that anything that we do, you're able to do as well and just copy and paste it. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, so the very first thing that you have to do on your regular computer, you need to go to raspberrypi.com and then you're gonna to go to software and then you need to install this Raspberry Pi imager. This is what we're gonna to use to load the operating system onto the SD card. Okay, go ahead and open the imager software and plug in your SD card into your computer. We're gonna load the operating system. So we'll select choose OS. And when I was trying this originally, as of the recording of this video, this first option didn't work. So I'm not gonna use that one. I'm gonna use this other option for Raspberry Pi OS. And then we're gonna use this light version. So the very first option. We're gonna choose storage. Now any SD card or flash drive that you have plugged in, it's going to actually recognize it in here and if it does, you need to make sure that you pick the right one because it's gonna wipe anything on that one. So we'll select our SD card. Now press Control Shift X to open up advanced options and you can set your host name and enable SSH. I highly encourage you to enable SSH. We're going to use it for this video and set a password for the user Pi. You can set up Wi-Fi. you can do your time zone and all these different options. So again, for this one, the most important thing is gonna be the host name and the actual authentication credentials for the user. And then if you're using Wi-Fi, go ahead and do that as well. Hit save, and then hit write. And it's going to erase everything. We'll hit yes. And when this finishes, we'll come back. Now we've successfully written the OS to our SD card. Now, if you are running a Windows computer and you get a message like this or on any other computer, do not format the disk. Formatting the disk will wipe everything that we just did, so we definitely don't want to do that. Go ahead and close that and hit continue. Now you need to eject your SD card, put it into your Raspberry Pi, plug it in and turn it on. Now we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. You need that host name that you set in the advanced options when we're configuring things. You also need that password that you set in the advanced options. Now the username is always going to be pi. That's not something that you can change. So just remember that. And there we go. We're SSH into our box. So now we're going to go ahead and update our Raspberry Pi to make sure everything is good to go. And again, I'll leave this command in the description. Now we need to go ahead and reboot our Raspberry Pi. All right, let's go ahead and SSH back in. There we go, we've set up our Raspberry Pi for the first time. So any projects that you wanna do, you're ready to go. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also make sure to check out the resources that I've left in the description. All right, let's get back to the content. So now with our Raspberry Pi, in order to set up DShield, we need to actually install Git. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now that we've installed Git, we need to download a copy of DShield. All right, now we're gonna change directories here. And we're gonna run the installation script. Once this is done installing, we'll be back. And we get a warning saying that we're gonna turn our Raspberry Pi into a honeypot. We're good with that, so we'll hit yes. We're gonna go ahead and participate in the research projects. We'll hit yes again. And we wanna get automatic updates, so we'll hit yes again. 
All right, so now this is asking us for an email address and an API key. So you're gonna have to go to the actual website, create an account, and then get an API key and come back and put it in here. Once you get your account and you log in, go ahead and hit my account, and then you'll have your API key and all the information that you need for that actual setup. All right, so after you've entered that information, it'll say something like this, that your API key is valid, and the firewall is gonna be configured. So we'll hit okay, and we'll leave this as the default. We're gonna leave this as the default too. This is for admin access, but you're gonna to wanna to write down this information. So we'll hit okay. And this is giving us the port and the IP addresses that are able to access this for admins. So we'll hit okay. And then on this, you can actually set up the ignore rule. So where it's not going to log activity from. So we're gonna actually set this for something else because we want to do a test and make sure this is working for our purposes. Normally you'll want this to be your internal network though. And that's gonna be our exception network. Again, I just changed it because I want it to be something other than the network that I'm gonna be on. Because I'm gonna run a test against this to show you. And again, we're gonna leave this as the default too. So we'll hit okay, okay. And a little bit more configuration. All right, now for the SSL certificate, you can fill in whatever you want. This is just some information to decoy attackers. So we'll hit okay and just keep everything as is. All right, on this, we're gonna go ahead and hit yes. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and reboot our Raspberry Pi. All right, now that it's updated, we can SSH back into our system. Now I'm gonna bring in an application called Putty. And if you remember, it changed the port that we can access our admin panel or our admin access. So it's 12222 is the default port. So we'll connect into that, we'll hit open, and we get this message here. So we'll hit yes. And we're gonna log in, same credentials that we were using. And then there we go, we are SSH'd back into our actual Raspberry Pi. Now if we wanna see our actual IP address, we'll do ifconfig, and then there is our IP address, perfect. And now I've opened up an instance of Kali Linux, so we're actually going to do a scan against our honeypot and see what comes back. So we'll just do a regular nmap scan here, and we'll hit return. All right, so now that our scan is done, we can go back up here and we can see that there are a whole bunch of ports that are open because again, this is a honeypot, so it's meant to look vulnerable. So 22, 23, we'll scroll through here and see some others. We see 80, we see 5555, we see 8000, we see 8080. So this opens all kinds of ports. Now, as you start to get logs and events on your Raspberry Pi, once you expose it to the internet or wherever you're doing things, you'll be getting them in your dashboard on the DShield website. So you'll log in, you'll go to my account, and then you'll have this my report section where you can see the different logs that are getting sent to your actual dashboard. Just a reminder, this does take like 30 minutes for it to update every time. So it's not gonna happen instantaneously, but it will happen over time. Question of the day, is this the first Raspberry Pi project that you've done? If not, what other projects have you done? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we set up your Raspberry Pi to be a honeypot using the DShield Honeypot service. Remember, as a cybersecurity professional or any technology professional, it's important that you play around with a lot of different technologies and see how they can work in non-traditional ways and then compare it against the traditional ways. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources, and I'll see you next time.